realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my soul, you've been so good. I gotta let the world know you took a broke down thug, scarred from sin. Wash me in your blood, now I'm new again. Now, when people see me, they say they can't be Tom. But the old man's dead, the old man's gone. I done been passed on from death to life. I know that doesn't sound right, but I've been raised with Christ. And his yoke is easy and burden is light. I ain't looking back, don't wanna be like Lot's wife. I don't have to think twice, I'ma serve Yahweh with all my might. Each and every day in the life that I live by the Son of God And He gave me the strength to rock hard So I'm singing these chords, slaying demons while I'm steady saying Thank you, Lord, hey! Thank you, Lord, oh my soul, you've been so good I gotta let the world know Thank you, Lord, for saving me You took away my sin when you hung on the tree And thank you, Lord, thank you for real That with you and by your stripes I was healed Check one, two, one, two. Praise God, hallelujah. This is what I do. It want my life to be a servant. This is what I choose. The hood for streets of gold, so really what I lose. And really, I don't lose. And for you, I got news. That old accuser, he defeated. Got a Bible, better read it. When I was living in the dark, it was hard for me to see it. Now I'm anointed in his presence. I don't never want to leave it. Lord, I love you. I repeat it like my vocab show. Free afraid of dying if they die with no passport. Look, preach the gospel. Rim. Tell them how to save your role. Let them beat them, hang them on the cross. But my sins are yours. Thank you for my life. For the shut and open doors. Thank you for my wife and my kids. But that I know we know. I love the way he hold me close, fill me with his holy gold. Ask me why I rep him like I do, Ruck, cause I suppose. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my soul, you've been so good. I gotta let the world know. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You took away my sin when you hung on the tree. And thank you, Lord, thank you for real. They whipped you and by your stripes I was healed. Thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given. You died on the cross so that I can start living. When I think about the Lord. What he's done for me My soul cries hallelujah Thank God for saving me If I had 10,000 tongues It wouldn't even come close To giving you the praise you deserve Yeshua the Lord of hosts Thank you Lord Oh my soul you've been so good I gotta let the world know Thank you Lord for saving me You took away my sin when you hung on a tree Thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given. You died on the cross so that I could start living. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank the Lord. Thank you. And thank you. Welcome to the show. God bless you. Welcome. Everybody worldwide, here we are live again on Thursday for your lunchtime. And, Jimmy, what's up? How you doing? First, we want to thank uh, Jerry Royce on Positive Power 21.org live and worldwide for being an amazing sponsor. And, uh, Kimmy, I got to thank Kimmy Robinson, my producer, for doing all the work. She does all the hard work. All I got to do is stand here and talk. So, and God gives me that, what to say, so makes it easy on me, see? How y'all doing? Doing good? Today, I didn't even know this title until like a few hours ago. And the Lord told me, let's talk. Because I was thinking, we need to talk to God. 
and he said, let's talk. So let's have a conversation with the Lord. And we should always do that. You know what? It's amazing talking to the Lord because nobody can give you wisdom and advice and just great conversation like God can. And it's, you know, you don't even need anybody else around to talk to God. You, and you can talk to God anywhere you want, anywhere, about anything. People don't understand that. You can talk to God about anything. But before we get all into this, let's pray real quick. Father in heaven, we just thank you for bringing us together today. And even if we're millions of miles away listening live to the show, just touch every ear and every heart to take in what you're saying, Lord. Take in the message you're giving me to say. And and we just love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And today, let's talk. So, um, I don't really know what we're talking about, but the Spirit will lead us, like always, like every Thursday. Yeah, you know, people have a lot of problems these days. Uh, everybody, we all do. A lot of things we're dealing with, a lot of things we're going through. And the one thing that people tend to do is not include the Lord in your situation. But see, Jesus can solve your situation. Jesus can take whatever your situation is and turn it around to your benefit. Jesus is amazing, and he loves us so much that he's there waiting just for us to call on him, just to talk to him. And sometimes we just need somebody to talk to. You know how you want to talk? You got a best friend or a relative or somebody that you just bounce stuff off of, like ideas, and you just talk about random stuff or whatever. You can do that with Jesus all the time, all day long, whenever you want. He even stays up late. Actually, he never sleeps. So anything that we need to get off our chest or anything we need advice on, anything we need to just talk about, we can talk with him. And that's something that we don't really think about a lot. You know, we in the back of our minds, we know he's there, but we're going through all these things during the week. It's a hard time we live in. It really is. You know, we do live in the last day. I know we've been in the last day for a long, long time, but this is getting toward the end of the last day. You know, it's like curtain call is going to be pretty soon. And maybe, you know, pretty soon don't mean tomorrow or the next day, but it's getting close. It's getting closer. And we can tell by the way things are going on in the world that it is near. You know, even if it's not in our lifetime, far past our lifetime. So it's getting pretty close. And all the things that are supposed to happen are happening. So we know that the world is getting worse all the time and things are getting done that don't make any sense. But at the same time, we can see that people do, there are people who are fighting for justice, who are fighting for equality, who are fighting for really doing God's work because God loves all of us and he thinks of all of us as, as the same, you know, not like man. God ain't racist. God ain't prejudiced, God ain't sexist, God ain't, God don't hate people. God loves us, and he enjoys us, and he wants better for us, and he wants good things for us. And we reject him all the time. You know, we like, oh, I got this, Lord, I don't need your help. So in rejecting him, we also, we don't talk to him. We don't talk to him. Like, well, yeah, on Sunday we go to church. And we don't even talk to him then. We just go to church and listen to whatever the pastor says or the priest says or, you know, whoever is in charge at our church. And then we just go, yeah, yeah, that's good. And then we leave. And, you know, we 
don't think about. Talking, just talking to Jesus. I love to talk to Jesus. And I'm sure, I know Kimmy likes to talk to Jesus. And it's just an amazing thing to feel like God is on your side. God is connected with you. God is talking. You know, people don't know, people don't realize you can talk to the Lord about anything in your life, anything. And I do mean anything. Any situation you're in, anything you're going through, anything you're doing at that moment, whatever it is, you know, because God sees everything we do every second of the day. And he hears everything we say. He hears everything we think. He hears everything in our heart that we feel. I mean, is that amazing or what? So who better to talk to about your situation than somebody who already knows you inside and out? Somebody knows every thought you have, every feeling you have, every every ounce of you. Jesus knows. He knows. And he cares. And he loves us. And he wants better for us. So in our daily lives, we should not just put him away on a shelf, you know. He's not an elf on the shelf. He's he's a guy, and he's a friend, and he's a, he's a loved one that can be counted on. You know, he's always there for us. He's always in our midst. He's always inside of us. He's always around us. He's always has an ear to hear what we're saying, and he always has advice to give us if we listen and we ask for it and we want it. You know, he doesn't force himself on you, but he's there just the same. See, that's the difference. People force themselves on you, and then they want you to do what they want you to do to benefit them. Jesus ain't trying to get us to benefit him. He don't need to be benefited. He's already got everything. He owns the world. He owns it all. Everything is his. Everything belongs to him, including us. And he just wants to be loved in the same way we want to be loved. He just wants to be held in high esteem the way we hold each other in high esteem. We put people on pedestals who don't even deserve it. We put people on pedestals because they can sing good or they can rap good, or they can they look good, or they're a movie star, or they're they can act good, or they can they can uh, figure out numbers good, or they can make a lot of money good. You know, anything that they can do that we can't do, we hold in high esteem. We think, oh wow, there's really something. They're really great, but nobody's greater than Jesus Christ. Nobody's greater than the Lord himself, and nobody is more humble at the same time than our God. But even in his humbleness, he's demanding in some ways, but he's God, so what do you expect? But he, at the same time, he's not overly bearing. He gives us our freedom he gives us so much freedom. He really does. He gives, he lets us do things because we're his children, and he loves us, and he wants us to grow and learn. And part of the way of learning and growing is to go through things and make mistakes. And he's always there to pick us up. He's always there to see us through. He's always there to help us on the other side and help us through it not just on the other side, but to get through it. You know, that fingerprints thing where you there's two people walking and then all of a sudden there's one and you're like, Jesus, why did you leave me? And he said, I didn't leave you, I'm carrying you. He does that through life all the time. Even when we don't ask him, he will still step in and do things to our benefit because he knows what the devil has waiting for us. He knows what life is. And he's there to help us. 
He's there to get us through. And he does want us to talk to him. He does want us to communicate with him. He wants to feel important. He wants to be acknowledged in our lives as the God that he is and as the man that he is. He's a loving, caring person and God at the same time. And he just wants what's best for us. He's happy when we're we're happy. He's happy when we're doing something great. He's happy when we're elevating our our uh, love and you know, elevating our kindness and elevating our brother and sisterhood. You know, he really he didn't put us on earth to be mean and to be nasty and to be fighting with people. And, you know, he understands, though, how we feel. But he understands when we get upset in certain situations. And he tries to help us through those situations. But he still, he wants us to talk to him and communicate with him and and know that he is there for us. He's always there for us. And he always will be. He doesn't go away. He's not like one of those friends like, oh, yeah, today I feel like being a friend, but not tomorrow. Tomorrow he's going to be the same friend that he was today, the same friend he was yesterday or last week or last month or last year. And he's going to be the same way next year and the next decade and the next century. He doesn't change. He's always the same, and he always loves us. He always cares for us. And he's just like a little conversation with us. You know, if you can't conversate with him every day, every once in a while it would be good. He wants us to know that he's there, and he wants to know that we know he's there. And and it shows that you know he's there if you're talking to him. But he don't want you walking around like, oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you never talk to him. You just kind of figure it out on your own. And you don't ask for his help, his advice, or any of that. And that's not good because he's just, he said, you have not because you asked not. He didn't ask him. He could have helped you. He didn't ask him. He could have told you. He didn't ask him. He could have paved the way for you. You didn't ask him. He could have moved stones for you. He could have moved mountains for you. He could have taken your situation and turned it all the way around. He could have moved every obstacle out of your way. But you never talked to him. You never asked him. You never wanted him to do anything. And you didn't realize, maybe you just didn't realize that you can do that. Maybe you thought it's too much to ask. Why? When somebody loves you that much, they they do things for you. Don't we do that for each other? When you when you're in a relationship when you love somebody, you do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. You go out of your way for somebody because that's how you feel about them. You care about them so much. You just want them to be happy. You just want them to be fulfilled. You want them to be content with everything that's going on with their lives and their situation. Well, Jesus is the same. He's the same. He doesn't abandon us. We abandon him. He doesn't forget about us. We forget about him. He acknowledges that we exist and we're there every single day. But do we do the same? Do we have five minutes to talk to him or five seconds or five hours? What's our deal? He wants to talk to us. He wants to communicate with us. He wants us to know that we're loved and we're watched over and we're taken care of. And he he enjoys us, you know. He really does. He doesn't like all the bad things we do, but he likes us. He loves us. And he wants us to love him too. And it's so easy to love him. Jimmy loves him. He's smiling over there. I know. 
I love him, and you love him, I know, or you wouldn't tune in to the show every week. You wouldn't tune in to uh, Kimmy's show. You wouldn't tune in, tune in to Jerry's show. You wouldn't tune in to anybody who's talking about Jesus if you didn't love him. You're not tuning in to the devil show, are you? You don't love the devil. So if the devil comes out with a show, you're not going to tune into that because you don't feel that way about him. I hope you don't because if you do, there's something wrong. <laughs> there's something seriously wrong. But there are people like that who do who do that. They, there are some people out there who like the devil. They like what he does. He confuses everything in their life, but they like it like that. He laughs at them when they talk to him, but they like it like that. He he makes them look bad, but they like it. He doesn't do anything to help them. What he does do might seem like it's helping them, but in the long run it's not. Because the devil don't give you nothing for free. If he's giving you something, he's going to take something away. Jesus is free. His love is free. It don't cost you nothing. It don't cost you nothing. Talking to Jesus, it don't cost you anything. A little time, but it's well spent time. It's well spent time. There's no greater time that you can ever spend in your whole life, time you spend talking to your God. And he enjoys it and he loves it because he enjoys us and he loves us. You know, we sit around and we, we raise our children and when we look at pictures of when they were little or videos and we say, hey, yeah, I remember when he was a little baby and he spit up on you that one time and, and, and his first time he was walking and the first word he said and that Jesus enjoys that right along with you. He really does. And we don't even realize it. We don't even recognize it. He just likes to be a part of our life. He's family. He's family. You know, family, they enjoy what you're doing, and they, they want to be all involved in it. If they're the right kind of family. And Jesus is the right kind of family. He he is our family. He is our father and our brother at the same time. And he's our friend and he's closer than close. And he wants to be involved in our lives in more than just, he don't want us to just come see him on Sunday. He's not waiting at the church, like I said before. He's with us all the time. And then we walk around talking bad and, and about him cussing him out, cussing his father out, cussing out the Holy Spirit. I don't know why people do that, but they do. And then they call themselves Christians, and they go to church. But they still do that. Why would you do that? If you love the Lord, why are you taking his name in vain? If you love the Lord, why are you talking so bad about him? Why are you, you don't cuss out the devil like that. You walk around, and and then it's acceptable in the world because the world don't love Jesus. The world don't care about God. The world don't care about you. But God does. Jesus loves you. And he wants better for you. And he wants more for you than you want for yourself. He wants better than what you've given yourself. He wants no credit. He don't want credit for anything he does. He just wants you to be happy. He wants you to feel loved. He wants you to be ready to live with him in heaven. And he's working with us all the time, each one of us, to get us to that point that when we die, when we go to heaven, when we stand in front of him and be judged, we can say, he can say, well done, and come in. 
enjoy heaven. It's yours. And we wait for that moment, and we think we can't get there because this life is so hard. This life is so crazy, and this life is so ridiculous that we, we don't even know how we can get through this life to get to the next. But the easiest way and the best way to do it is to have a communication all the time with Jesus, communicate all the time with the Lord, talk to him daily, talk to him hourly, talk to him every second if you have to, or if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, if you just want that that conversation, and he talks back to you, you know, he speaks to you too. And you know it in your heart. And you you can feel when he's showing you love. And you can hear his voice inside of you. If you really pay attention, if you really... See, most people don't. They don't have a connection with Jesus. They don't have that connection. And people have said that. You know, I've met people like that. It's like, oh, yeah, I was I was raised in the church and this... But I never felt that connection with him. I had a boss once. I had a supervisor once. And he was raised as Catholic. And he knew about the Trinity. He knew about, he believed in Jesus. And then now he called himself an atheist. And he told me why. He said, I don't, I never felt that connection with Jesus. But you're fake. You're not a real atheist. You're a fake atheist. I don't understand what you're saying because he he told me his daughter every Christmas would tell his grandchildren about Jesus, the birth of Jesus, and how the wise men came and brought gifts. But he taught her that, and she taught him that. But then he's calling himself an atheist, talking about I, I never felt the connection with Jesus. Why? Why didn't you feel connected to the Lord? You're just confused. Maybe you didn't talk to him enough. Because if you talk to him enough, you can't be confused. If you talk to him enough, you can't feel disconnected. Because you're every time we talk to Jesus, we're more connected. We're closer. We're getting closer to where we want to be. We're getting to love. We're getting closer to friendship. We're getting closer to awesomeness. You know, we're getting closer and closer to being godly. We have to make that connection and we have to talk to him. And I still think that that supervisor I was talking about, he knows Jesus. He doesn't want to admit it. For some reason, claiming you're not to me, you're not a real atheist. Atheists really don't believe there is a God. And what he was saying to me was, he knows there's a God. He knows there's a God. Feel connected to him because you need to talk to him. You need to talk to him. You walk around like yeah, I believe in Jesus, but you never talk to him. Why not? He's there to talk to. He's easy to talk to. You can talk to him about anything at all. You know, like you two talk to each other. Please try not to do it while I'm doing my show. No, sorry. I'm just joking. But you can't tell me that you love the Lord and you never speak to him. What kind of love is that? If you came up to me and told me you love me, but then you never talk to me, how do I know you love me? You don't do anything for me. You never speak to me. I'm getting attitude because I think you just don't like me. But see, God don't get an attitude about it. He don't get an attitude like he's not like us. We get an attitude. He doesn't. But we have to remember Jesus is part man, too. So he feels something left out, unappreciated. 
left alone because we don't talk to him. We don't want to walk with him. We don't want to conversate with him. We don't give him our, you know, we should talk to him like he's our best friend because he really is. He's a better friend than anybody we're going to find on earth. He's a better friend than anybody we could ever imagine. So we tell who we think is our friend our business. Tell them all about our business. And then they run and tell everybody else. But if we tell Jesus, he ain't telling nobody else. So keep it to himself. He has no interest in spreading your business out there in the street. He has no interest in spreading your deepest, darkest secrets to anybody. He already knows what they are. But if we talk to him about it, he can give us clarification about what we should do. He can make things clearer to us, how we can work through these things and how we can get to the other side. But we have to communicate with him. We have to talk to him. We have to share our lives with him and spread the love that he's given us. We have to give it back to him. You know, and that's how we show God love, talking to him and and doing things that make him happy and trying to be more like him and and not like like other people. We should stand out as different because we care and we show the love of God toward other people. You know, there's a lot of things we can we can go out and fight for. We can voice our opinion on these days, a lot of things that are wrong in the world, a lot of things that need attention, need help, need God's guidance, and people are not getting that because people don't want to talk to him. People think that you have nowhere to turn, but you can always turn to Jesus. You can always talk to Jesus, and he will help you through any situation, any situation. We think we can't but he, we we can. And if you ask him, he'll help you. He'll help you. You know, I, as I've gone through my life, I didn't, when I was a child, I didn't ask God to help me. And then you, you see people, and then I became a, a Christian, and then I, I felt him inside of me. I knew things that I shouldn't know, you know, at a, at a young age, I knew this ain't right. This don't sound right because why? Not because I'm a genius, not because I'm anything special, because God was inside of me and God told me, this ain't right. Say something, do something, be something more than what they want you to be. Be more than what they expect you to be. Be more than what the world says you can be. Because you can. Because Jesus made us to be great. Even if we're down here at the bottom, we can still be great. Because God made us to be. And that's why I say to be great, to be having everybody falling all over you like, oh, you're so wonderful. That's not what it's all about. To be great in the eyes of the Lord. When he, that one day when we're standing in front of him, he can say, you did a great job. And the way you did that, I loved it. The way you stood up to the devil, that's what I'm talking about. The way you talk to me all the time, we're already close. We're already close. I just want you to come inside and be in my heaven because we already have a communication. Right? You know, we don't want to stand in front of Jesus and he's like, well, let me see. You did all right, but I don't even know you really because you never talked to me. Why, why would you want to come and live with me when you don't know me and you're not trying to know me? And you say you know me, but and you were okay. You didn't spend a whole lot, but you didn't even talk to me. You didn't communicate with me. You didn't give me a chance to help you through 
do your life. You didn't give me a chance to make things right for you. You didn't. You didn't. When this happened in your life, what you thought I didn't know about it? I knew about everything, but you didn't talk to me. I could have helped you through that, and I could have helped you through this and a couple other things, but you never came to me. Never never spoke to me about it. You never asked for my advice. You never asked for my help. You never asked for my wisdom. You never asked for anything. But you followed what the devil said to do. You followed what the devil wanted you to do, but you didn't talk to me. The devil has no importance here. I do. And you need to speak to me. You speak, and I will speak back to you. And I will tell you what you want to know. And I will cover you with my love and guide you through your life. And then I will already know you, and you will already know me when you stand in front of me one day. And I can say, hey, friend, what's up? What's, how you doing? I know, you know, you died on earth, but look, I got a whole heaven waiting for you. Yeah, come on in, because we're already friends. We already love, look, we're family. We love each other. I love talking to you. You know, Jesus likes to be included. He likes us to talk to him. He likes to walk with us and talk with us, you know, in the Bible, and in the beginning of man, Adam, he walked and talked to the Lord all the time. Now, see, the Bible says that he walked with with God, and he spoke to God, and God spoke back to God, to Adam. And we don't think about when God is walking and talking and hanging out with Adam, that was Jesus. That was Jesus doing that. You know, the Father ain't coming down and walking with you and talking with you. Every time you look in the Old Testament and see, you're not going to get this everywhere you go. You might not get this on Sunday, okay? But you're going to get it here today. When you read about the things God did and how he came down and walked through the fire with the three boys and how he came down and sat in the tent with Moses all the time and talked with him face to face. And when he came down and he wrestled with Abraham and when he came down and walked with Adam and talked with Adam. All of that was Jesus. It was all Jesus. That's why, and then Isaiah told about him coming. But when he came, he'd already been here. And he was born to Mary, but he'd already been here. He'd already been here. Because he's God. And he walked this earth, and he talked, and he communicated with people. And he still does. He still talks to us. He still may be walking around some places, and you don't know it because you don't know who he is, and you don't recognize what he looks like. And you don't have to look like he really looks when he was walking around earth before he went back to heaven. He don't have to look like that. He can look any way he wants to look. He's God. He can do whatever he wants. But don't think that he'll never come down here and walk amongst his people. Don't think he'll never come down here and hang out and see how everybody's doing. He's got to come down here sometimes. I believe it. He has to come down here sometimes because people ain't talking to him. So he wants to come and see for himself. Like, what's what's 
really happening here? Because these people stop talking to me. No, we don't talk to him. We'll talk to the devil all day long. Cussing out God. We do that. And the devil's happy. He's overjoyed. He's ecstatic. Because he don't like God. And he don't like Jesus. And he, he loves it when we take the name in vain. He loves it when we sin. He loves it when we do wrong. And he especially loves it when we don't ever talk to Jesus. He don't want us to talk to Jesus. He don't want us to talk to God. He doesn't want us to communicate with him. He wants us to listen to what he's saying, what the world's saying. You know, he wants us to go do things that we shouldn't be doing. He wants us to do things that God would not approve of. He wants us to do things that are harmful to us, not help. He don't want us to get help for our situation. He don't want us to talk to the Lord, period. He never wants that. Because if we talk to the Lord, we might get clear about some things. We might fix some things we, that are broken. We might find a better way than what the devil has us doing. We might understand that God loves us and the devil don't. He don't want that. He don't want that at all. But we need that. We need that. You know, this world is so weird, so funny sometimes, but so so evil and hurtful and harmful. And people are really trying to find a way today, I believe, you know, People are trying to understand some things. People are trying to get a hold of what's going on. People are trying to do it without Jesus. You can't do it without Jesus. You really can't. You know, it's like we got things going on, hashtag me too. Uh, There's a whole movement against something that's been going on for a long, long time, and people didn't talk about it. And people was hush-hush and kept it under under wraps. These people were sexually harassing people and sexually abusing people. And it's a terrible thing, and we need to end it. And, and it didn't even dawn on most of us. Some of the things that people say is that it was totally wrong and inappropriate, and we shouldn't do it. But now we have no excuse for thinking that way anymore. We have no excuse for thinking it's okay to talk to somebody in a certain way, to talk to somebody as if they should give us whatever we want or scared to say anything to anybody. Because people ain't scared to say nothing about it no more. It's out in the open. And we're finding out every day that more and more men have been sexually harassing and sexually abusing women and other men and boys and whoever. And it's not acceptable. And it's not good. But it's been going on for a long, long time. And if you've been going through that, you need to talk to Jesus. Get get some help for your mental state. Get some help for your physical state. Get some help to deal with what you've been going through and how you've been feeling. And if you're one of those people that's been doing that to people, again, you need to talk to Jesus to change and find a better way to treat people and and come to terms with the fact that you've been doing wrong and get it right. You know, I've recognized that everything I've said in my lifetime wasn't always good. 
you know, and I can blame it on my time growing up and and not having my parents around while I was growing up, and I can blame it on a lot of stuff, but it ultimately it just comes back to me the way it was and what I heard, and maybe I said some things that weren't appropriate when I was younger. I never did anything to anybody, but words, no matter what their song says, you know, or that saying, the sticks and stones may break my bones and words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Words hurt people all the time. Words are, words are an amazing thing. I mean, I write words. They're amazing. They can lift you up. They can bring you joy. They can bring you happiness. They can make you laugh. They can bring you down and feel bad at the same time. Words are very powerful. They're very powerful, and God created words to lift you up and to help you communicate, but the devil uses them to bring people down and hurt you. So don't don't ever believe that words can't hurt you. That's a lie they told us a long time ago, and he's still trying to tell it, and it's simply not true. So when this whole thing started going on and, people getting arrested and people taking to court and people coming out of everywhere. Yeah. And it's an amazing movement, you know, hashtag me too. It's an amazing movement. And it, and, and I know God is right there with you and, and right there in the midst of it saying, let's stop this, you know, let's put an end to this. And I, so I and I felt the need to write about it. So I wrote a little book called Hashtag Me Too. Yes, I I wrote that to express how I felt about it myself and recognizing some of the things that I've said when I was a child or growing up. You know, when I was a child I'll show my age here. I was a child in the seventies and when I went to school they would say things they didn't even have a clue about what they were talking about. They really didn't. And they would say it anyways because they heard it from somebody older than them. And me, I didn't lie. You know, I wouldn't lie. So they would say, oh, I did this. And I had sex with this person. And I'm like looking at them like you're 10 years old. And then they would be like, you know, but it was a thing. When you, even when you're that age, you think you're grown. And they would lie, and they would say, yeah. They didn't even know what they were talking about. They hadn't, They didn't have a clue. You know, sex to them was like holding somebody's hand. You know, they didn't know. And they would, and then they would do, they would all be lying. You know, they would all be lying. And they would look at me, and they're like, have you ever did this? And I, and I wouldn't lie, and I was like, No. And then he would laugh at you, and they would, ha, ha, he, he never, you never either. You're a bunch of liars. Not all of you. You know, but they didn't care. They'd laugh, and they'd act like they were telling the truth, and I knew they were lying anyways. Like, they didn't even know what they were talking about. I didn't know what they were talking about either. I had no clue. And they, I didn't have anybody at home to even teach me what they were talking about. But they heard it from their parents. You know, we still do that to this day. Kids hear stuff that their parents say. They hear stuff they shouldn't hear, and they don't know what they're talking about. Or nowadays, I think a lot of them do know what they're talking about, and that's not good. But they spend all their time talking about that stuff, but they don't talk to Jesus. Don't talk to Jesus. Get a real scoop about what life is about. It's not about all that stuff. It's about caring for one another. It's about putting God first. And it's about putting other people ahead of yourself and loving other people. It's that simple. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. It's really simple. And if we've done anything 
to offend anybody, you know, not just hashtag me too, but anything that we've done to offend anybody, the Bible says we should apologize. We should ask their forgiveness. And if they don't want to forgive us, that's okay too. At least we've given them our sincerity. You know, we've we said we're we're sorry and we didn't even if we did mean to do it, we're we recognize that we did wrong and we hope they can forgive us. And then if they don't forgive you, that's okay too. Because God forgives you, and you've done what he asked you to do, then what more can you do? You can't make somebody forgive you. But if you've done something really bad, then you need to make amends in some way. You know, be it if these people go into prison, they get sued and they're paying money. I don't know. That's the way the world deals with it. But God said, Apologize If somebody feels that you Offended them Even if you don't think you did We should apologize Because they're feeling that way for a reason We can't just dismiss how people feel We need to stop doing that We need to recognize You know people laugh at people Oh oh, yeah right that happened Sure you shouldn't worry about it Just go on with your life But it really bothers this person So they need some closure on it. You know, they need some help with it. And talking to Jesus would always help in everything. You know, we need to stop focusing on man and focus on God. Because God is always focused on us. He's always focused on us. He's always showing love. He's always showing amazing Friendship and help. And if you're out there and you need help, call on him. If you're out there and you need somebody to talk to, talk to him. If you're out there and you need somebody's forgiveness, ask God to forgive you. Because that's the first step, you know, in being a whole person, a godly person person who other people can look up to, respect. You know, our children out here are lost. It's a lost generation. And I've heard that before. My generation probably was a lost generation too, but children are always being lost. Not in a sense, you know, physical term. I'm not talking about that. Although that is true too, but I'm talking about Children need Jesus in their life. And if you raise them up with Jesus when they get grown, even though they're going to stray away and they're going to try to do their own thing, they will come back. This is what the Bible says. Yes, the Bible says it. So just We don't just stand up here and talk about what we think because it's not what I think. It's what Jesus has given us. Today, Thursday, next Thursday, tomorrow, every day, Jesus gives us great wisdom, great advice, great friendship, great fellowship, great love. He gives us all kinds of amazing gifts to share with each other, not just to keep to ourselves. You know, there's a place in the Bible where it talks about how God gave somebody something and they hid it away. Okay, well, it wasn't God who gave it, but Jesus told this parable about somebody who was giving the man, their boss, he gave somebody something, and he said, do something with this. Then he gave somebody else something, do something with this. Then he gave somebody else something. And then he came back to see what they did with him. And the one person just spent it all, just blew it. Just They don't have any more left. Another one, he he gave it, used it in a wise way, but he don't have it. He just he gave it to somebody else who needed it more. 
And then there's like another guy that he just he didn't do anything with it. He just put it away for a rainy day. And you would think, you know, and I think the people thought that back then, you would think that, okay, the guy was wise who would put it away and he didn't spend it and he didn't use it. No, that's not the person who did the right thing. And the one who just went out and blew his money on whatever, he's not the one that did the right thing either. It was the one who used it wisely to help somebody else. Like, they don't have any monetary thing to show for it. They don't have any physical thing to show for it. But they have a heart. They show love, compassion for somebody else. And that's that's doing God's work. That's right there. That's a godly thing. That's a Jesus thing right there. And that's what we should be doing. Don't just hold on to what you got. And do nothing with it If God gives you a talent We need to use it In the right way To help other people And to make life better For those around us God gives us amazing gifts Sometimes He gives everybody a talent But he gives amazing Gifts to certain people And then he waits and he watches And he sees how we use it You know and some people use it In a good way and some people use it in a bad way. And, you know, God can take this talent away from you if he wanted to. He doesn't always do it. Sometimes he lets people keep their talent to see what they're going to do with it later on. Maybe they'll change and they'll start doing stuff to help other people. And he likes that. Or maybe they won't. But he gave it to them just the same. And he lets them keep it just the same. But maybe you don't, you're not so popular anymore. You're not so, people are not paying attention to you anymore because you didn't use what you had in the right way. You didn't use what God gave you to help other people. You know, we can't just be selfish with our gifts and we just can't be selfish with our God. We we need other people to know about Jesus. We can't just walk around like, yeah, Jesus is all mine. I talk to him every day, day and night, but I don't want anybody else to talk to him. I don't want anybody else to know him. I don't want anybody else to care about him, love him, and I don't want anybody to feel his love for them. There's a lot of people act like that. Jesus don't belong to just one person. He belongs to everybody. You know, I know he's he's a great friend and he's a the great love of your life and he's the great God and he's a great, amazing everything. Everything you need, everything you want, everything you desire that's not sinful is Jesus. And he can't be for ransom. He can't be kept for your own personal gain or use or whatever you think. He has to be used. He has to be loved. He has to be spread throughout the world. He has to be allowed to interact with everyone. And you can't stop him. He's God. He's uh, Let's get real. He loves all of us. And he wants to talk to us. He wants to talk to us. That's why he sent the book, Jesus I Am. You know, I've talked about this before. I wrote it for him. I wrote what he told me to write. It's like a red letters book. But he said it don't need to be in red letters because we know he's talking throughout the book. I'm just quoting what he said, put in the book. But that's why he wrote the book, Jesus I Am. And that's why it's out there. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's on Amazon. It's on Kindle. It's on Nook. It's on Kobo, Canada, and around the world. It's everywhere. You should get it. You should read it, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. God is communicating with us. 
Jesus is having a talk with us. He's talking to us. He's letting us in on him, his personality. You know, his funny, his he, his sense of humor, his great love for us, and how he cares, and 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 he's just letting us in on him, the kind of God he is, the kind of person he is, the kind of amazing, amazing friend and brother and father and sister and mother, whatever you need. He's all that. He's all that. He is all of that. So he's talking to us through this book. He really is. And if you haven't gotten the book yet, you need to get it. You're never going to find a more amazing book to you as Jesus would talk to you. It's written down now. It's in words. It's in print. You'll you'll find a light in this book, I, I promise you. And if you love the Lord, you'll be amazed by it. And the things he has to say just to try to communicate to us today in this time. Because he knows he's going to be coming back soon. And he wants us to be friends with him. He wants us to be family with him. And he wants us to know that he ain't coming to condemn us. He's coming to love us. He ain't coming to hurt us. He's coming to help us. He ain't coming to do us in. He's coming to lift us up. And he wants us to know that. He wants us to know ahead of time. This is me. Jesus, I am. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm feeling for you. And this is what I want to convey to everybody. That I'm real. I'm here. I never went anywhere. I'm still around. And I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. You know, I know you've heard this at church. You should have. Jesus ain't going nowhere. And he's not trying to force himself. See, the thing is, he don't force himself on anyone. That's The devil tries to force himself. On you, but Jesus, He don't force Himself on anybody. He's not like these men that's being charged for forcing themselves on women and little boys and little girls and whoever. He ain't nothing like that. Jesus don't force Himself on anybody. Jesus shows you His love and waits for you to accept it. And if you show it back, he's happy. He he loves that. You know, he he feels connected to you then because you're communicating with him back and forth. Back and forth. Because he wants that connection with us. And that's why he put this book out, because he wants to be connected with us. He wants us to know him. He wants us to love him because he knows us and he loves us. He wants us to be on, you know, I was thinking, some people are really on fire for God. Some people are really, you know, I don't know, I probably don't sound way excited all the time, but I am, but that's just my personality. But Kimmy, she gets real excited when she talks about the Lord. She's just out of this world. It's so fun. I love to listen to her. And by the way, that last show was awesome, Kimmy. And the one you sent me, it was, it was unbelievable. She's so, and I, I love it. I'm going to talk for a second about her because I know she don't want me to talk about her, but I'm going to talk about her anyway. But if you get a chance, and you should have, a chance because you can go in any time and find her shows that are already recorded. Listen to Kimmy. Kimmy Kim Robinson at midnight. 
Midnight with Kimmy Kim, listen, and, and you'll be amazed at the joy and the excitement that she has for the Lord. She's just on fire for the Lord. I mean, I love it. It's just, just amazing. And we should all be like that. You know, we don't have to be, we got to be ourselves. Don't be fake with it. You know, be, be yourself. However you do it. But well, we need to be on fire for God. We need to be on fire for Jesus. We need to feel, we need to show him how much we love him. Because he shows us every day. Every day he shows us. And we need to show him back. We need to show him back. Give the love back, you know. When you're getting advice and you're getting love and you're getting friendship and you're getting compassion and you're getting all these things from God. He's taking care of you. In the morning you walk and you talk and you can see and you can taste and smell and you can touch and if you have all these senses you know it's God that gave them to you. It's God just keeping you that way. You it's amazing how you see people who can't see they use other senses more, or they can't hear, or they can't talk. But they know, they should know, that God has still blessed them. He still blessed them. Look at, look at Stevie Wonder. This man can't see. He came out when he was 13 years old. Couldn't see then either. He's written some amazing. Things. Amazing, and, and he's and he's used his gifts and his talents to say things that we need said, you know, against racism, against hatred, against all kinds of things, you know, that are bad. And he's he's just an amazing, amazing person, an amazing artist. And he he don't, I don't, you know, I, I feel like he don't get recognized enough. But that's. That's a walking miracle. That's a a blessed man right there. Because he can't see. But he writes the, the most amazing songs and he produces and he does all these things and he can play all these instruments and he, he's just, God has blessed him so much. And it's, I'm just using him as an example because I know he follows Jesus because he recognizes He's blessed And he don't let God down He uses his talent That God gave him in amazing ways And he's I'm I'm, I'm waiting for the next album I'm like put another one out Stevie Because I want to hear it Because I know it's going to be something great again Because God has blessed him God has his hand on him He can do things See never think that you can't do something because you have, you know, something wrong as far as the world's concerned. You have something wrong with you, but God said you don't. God said you can you you can still do things even though you're different from other people. Sometimes that was what makes you special. Praise the Lord better. Than some people that makes you special, but they're special too. We're all special. That's the point here is we we are all special, and we all have things we can do that other people don't do. You know, maybe you can wear red like nobody else can wear red and make it look good, and you can you can wear flowers in your hair. And nobody else can wear it the way you wear it. Nobody else can talk to somebody and make them feel good like you do. Nobody else can cook that fried chicken like you. Nobody else can be a, an ear when somebody needs to talk and just listen. You know, some people, they don't they don't want to listen to what you have to say. They want to keep interfering, interrupting what you're saying and, and give their own you know, you want to talk about themselves. Well, then that's not the person you need to talk to. 
But Jesus always listens. He doesn't interrupt you. And when you're done, he's going to give you sound advice. You just need to listen. Take it. And then you'll be jumping for joy every time you talk about Jesus the way Kimmy does. And she does. And it, it's amazing when you feel that joy from loving the Lord and you feel that joy from talking to the Lord and you feel that joy from being blessed by the Lord. You know, we're all blessed. Those of us who follow Jesus, you can't help but feel the love. You can't help but feel blessed when you're the real one, not the fake one. You know what? If you want to get fake people away from you or people that you just don't want around you because they're not nice or whatever, talk about Jesus. They will scatter like roaches. They'll be out of there. I'm telling you, they will. The people that stay really want to talk about Jesus. But the fake ones will leave. Or there's some that are really good at being fake. And they'll hang around for a minute and try to talk about it. And then they, but eventually they'll leave. They're not going to stay too long. I had a situation once where I was talking about Jesus with somebody, but somebody came up to me and said, Jesus said this. What What is this that I hear that Jesus said? And, and what does this scripture mean? And they came and asked me, and I and I went to tell him what it meant and what it, what God was saying, and somebody else came in and interrupted what we were doing, and she started talking about, oh I know some scriptures and it's just started quoting a few scriptures that had nothing to do with each other, they had nothing to do with what we were talking about, trying to make herself look big, but she wasn't really she was fake. You know, anybody can memorize stuff from the, the Bible. And, you know, the devil knows the Bible better than anybody. He knows every word of it, and he uses it against God. That's what he does. You know, so I just put, I told the lady, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'll get back to you later because the devil has tried to interrupt what's going on here. And he'll do that. He will do that. But you know what? God is going to find a way to get you your answer. He's going to find a way to still communicate what you want to communicate. If we got to come back in a little while or we just got to say some other things for them to go. But see, this woman came talking about Jesus, so she wasn't going to leave quietly. And I'll see you later. And then later I got to talk to the lady and I got to give her what God gave me to give her the answer to what she wanted. And we can do that. But don't let the devil just stop you from what what God sent you to do. Even if you have to postpone it for an hour or two or a day, whatever, don't forget it. Come back to it. It's important. If somebody wants to know something, it's important. It was important to them because they asked you. So it's important that you answer them. You know, it's important that God talks to us and it's important that we talk to him. So let's do that more in our daily lives. Let's go forward in the next week and and spend some more time talking to Jesus. Spend some more time talking to him. And I bet you'll feel better in your life. You'll feel more love and more caring because you'll feel it from the Lord. You'll feel his love. You'll feel his compassion. You'll feel his caring. Just talk to him. Talk to him more than you usually do. And if you don't talk to him at all, anything you talk about is going to be it's going to be amazing going to be amazing but don't be fake about it just be you because God made us all different 
and just just have a conversation and talk to him about anything you want. He'll answer you. He will answer you. There's nothing that Jesus cannot talk with you about, nothing, because Jesus knows every aspect of your life. He knows everything about you and me and you and you too. He knows what you're doing. You can't. You're not hiding nothing from Jesus. You think he don't know what you do in the bedroom? He knows what you're doing there, too, and you can talk to him about that, too, because you need his help in all things. You need his love in all things. You need his guidance in all things, and then you'll get it right. You won't mess up as much. If you just talk to him, talk to him. And while you're talking to him, also do yourself a favor. Get on your computers or your phone and go to Barnes & Noble and look up Jesus I Am by Larry Corkins and get it for yourself and read what Jesus is saying to the world today. Some of it will make you laugh. None of it will make you cry. And all of it will make you feel more connected, more understanding about where he's coming from and how he's working things out for us and how he's dealing with the devil and how he's helping you and how he wants us to love each other. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. Now, we need to go not only get the book, but talk to Jesus. Communicate with Jesus. Keep an open dialogue with Jesus. You know, you can come back to whatever you was talking about. If something gets interrupted, you had to be somewhere at work, you had to just, you can still talk to him in your head. You know, you don't have to talk out loud. Talk to Jesus. You can talk to Jesus anywhere, and you can still pray in school quietly, and they don't know if you do it inside of your head and your heart. People don't even know you're doing it. They can't take that away from you. No, they can't take that away. And Jesus will talk to you back, and he will he will communicate his love for you always. So that being said I just Man I just feel good You know what I'm going to go talk to Jesus Myself You know he's talking to me now But I'm going I'm to go Have a conversation with Jesus When I get out Out of the show And, and Tell him thank you For being so amazing in my life you can do that too, you know. You can thank him for what he does for you. Ain't no shame in it. It's good. You should recognize what he does for you every day. And thank him. Just thank him, you know. Because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But he does it because he loves us. He loves us. And he loves to hear us praise him. He loves to hear us praise his Father and himself and the Holy Spirit. And he loves to hear us say good things about each other, too. Oh, he don't like to hear us talk bad about each other. He likes to hear us talk good about other people. He likes to hear us say positive things. He wants us to be happy. You know, he really does. He wants us to be happy. And I got to tell you, Jesus makes me happy because he's he's blessed me with a beautiful wife, beautiful children, with a good life, good job, good friends like Kimmy. He blessed me with this show. He blessed me to be able to write his words in books that will be there forever. 
He blessed me. He blessed Kimmy. He blessed us all every day. So the least, the least we can do is talk to him. Tell us how how you doing today, Lord. He's always good, but you can still ask him. It shows you care. How you doing today, Jesus? Me, I'm doing fine because of you. Because of you. It's all because of him. So I want everybody to go forward this week. I want you to go buy the book, Jesus I Am, so you can see what he's talking about. And I want you to pray to him, and I want you to talk to him more than you've ever talked to him before and keep that dialogue going week after week after week. And it has just become a commonplace for you. Keep that communication open with Jesus. You'll find out you'll be happier. You'll be more blessed. You'll feel better about things. You know, God is the ultimate therapist. He will help you through situations that you didn't think you could get through. But you got to talk to him. He's waiting to talk to you. And he's not waiting at the church. No, he's inside of you. He's just waiting for you. He's not forcing you. But he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to communicate with him. He wants you to be close to him. I don't know how you could be any closer to him than Kimby is, but let's be close to Jesus. Let's talk to Jesus. Let's have that's our best friend. He really is our best friend. He's each and every one of us best friend. He really is. And once we recognize that, the better off we'll be. Talk to him. Communicate with him. Love him. He's yours. He's mine. He's all of ours. He's there. He's here. He's everywhere. He's here to help us, get us through, guide us in every way. Let's just talk with him like he's our best friend because he is. And he'll talk to us like we're his best friend, which I hope we are. And we're going to pray. And then we're going to get up out of here because Kimmy got things to do. I was playing. <laughs> she ain't got nothing to do. No, I was playing. Okay, Father, Father, Father in heaven, we love you, Lord. We thank you. You know what? I was just going to pray, but now I just feel like praising you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus, your son. Be our God and guide us and help us do all things, Lord. I just praise you, Lord, for all the amazing gifts and talents you give to people to make life easier for the rest of us, Lord. I I praise you, Lord, for blessing me with mine and and blessing me with with your words that I can write for you, Lord. It's just an honor and a privilege and I never want to overlook that, Lord, and and bless people to, to go get your book and Jesus I am and read it and find out how how funny you are and how amazing you are and how it's so easy to talk to you and you communicate with us in, in our own language in today's world, Lord. And we thank you for just getting us through everything and just keeping us going. And and we pray that everybody will start talking to you more and communicating more and getting more involved in what you want us to do and and just feel the love, feel the love of the Lord, feel the love of you, Lord. We just ask you to cover us with your amazement and your love and your compassion. We ask you to bless us in our daily routines and help us to find a better way to do things, a godly way to do things. And, and we don't, we know we don't have to be perfect, Lord, but we want to be better than what we are, Lord. Bless us to have you always. As we know you're not going anywhere, 
Just bless us to be close to you. And don't let us forget that we need to talk to you every day because we love you every day. And we thank you every day. And please bless everybody who hears the word today, who feels the love today, who loves you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I love that word, amen. Amen. It's like hallelujah. 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 Ain't that a good word? Hallelujah. It says it all. It's a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is amazing. And he just loves us. Don't you feel good about that? God just loves us. He loves us. And they'll never forget it. Talk to him. Feel the love. Give the love. Share the love. The Lord is there. He's never going anywhere. He loves us. He's always got our back. Just communicate more with Jesus, and you'll see. You'll see a change in your life. It'll be better. You'll feel better. Things will work out better. You know, he gives the best advice you could ever get. He guides us better than any guide. No GPS can guide you the way Jesus can. You know, so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for showing up. And where that again next week? That red is amazing. A tie. Yeah, I like that, man. That's good. Kimmy, what can I say? Another amazing show, another amazing job, another amazing, you know, Kimmy's praising the Lord all day long. I'm telling you, when you listen to her show, you'll understand. She's just on fire for the Lord, and she's not going to stop. You better get out of her way, or you're going to get burned up. But she... <laughs> She is, uh, check her show out. Midnight, Kimmy Kim Robinson. It's amazing. It's awesome. And I love it. It's so real. That's what I love about it. She's so real. So real. It's like, you know, you, it's the difference between the way I talk and the way she talks. But I love to listen to her because she's just so real. And you get that, you know, when you listen to her. So check that out. And Jerry Royce, check him out too. God bless everybody. Come back next week. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. And get his book, Jesus I Am, by Larry Corkins on Barnes & Noble. You can get it on Amazon too. But do yourself a favor. Get that book. And and you'll you'll love it, you really will. And talk to Jesus and have an awesome week. Just walk with the Lord, talk with the Lord. God bless you. I just can't say enough. I'm stop talking today. Okay. And I love everybody. I love y'all. God bless you. Thank you. See you next week. Talk to you next week. Everybody around the world. Check it out next week. It's going to be another awesome show. As long as Kimmy's producing, and she ain't never going to stop producing myself. So it's, you know, it's our show. That's what I say. It's an awesome thing. God bless you. Check her show out. And have a great week. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us of our trespasses, in Jesus' name, amen. Bring it! My life's back on track, I'm feeling good, matter of fact, 
the Holy Spirit got him jumping. I don't know how to act. A sanctified Christian on a mission. God bless it. Watch your music. Got him dancing two step and church and session. In the name of Jesus, we give God the glory. The book of Ephesians, Paul tells the story. How Jews and the Gentiles shared in God's promise. Peace in the Middle East today is coming. coming. I pray for more peace in the streets where we live. I pray for the day I live to see my grandkids. I pray for the day they stop the